On a Friday night, just days before Christmas in 2023, a Texas teenager named Hunter Cameron Villasena was accused of mowing down a sleeping homeless woman in Houston while driving under the influence. The victim was sleeping in the median of the road that Villasena was traveling down when Villasena ran her over with his Mercedes GLK 350 and then crashed into a wall. According to the police, the teen struck a curb while driving erratically and proceeded to lose control of his car. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene at 11.30 p.m. Workers from a nearby Jack in the Box restaurant held Villasena until the police arrived. Prosecutors claimed that he offered the employees bribes via Venmo if they would let him go, but they refused. He pleaded not guilty to intoxication manslaughter and is free on a $200,000 bond as he awaits trial. In the meantime, Viasena is banned from driving. Number 12. Jennifer Massey In October of 2024, police were called to a construction site in Comal County. Texas. In response to a report about suspicious activity at the property, upon arriving at the scene, officers encountered a 51-year-old high school art teacher, Jennifer Massey, engaging in inappropriate conduct with a teenage male. Massey was charged with one felony count of improper relationship between educator and student. She has since been placed on leave from her job, and her employer made it clear that they do not condone the type of behavior she is accused of. Records show that she bonded out of jail amid the ongoing case. Number 11. Kesley Pope A family's lives were forever changed on Halloween night in 2021 when 24-year-old Kesley Pope fatally struck 43-year-old Susan Dow and Dow's teenage son, Toby, in Orem, Utah, while driving under the influence. The victims were on their way home from an Andrea Bocelli concert in Salt Lake City when they ran out of gas. They pulled over along Interstate 15 in Utah County and were parked along the shoulder when Pope, who was 22 years old at the time, plowed into their vehicle while driving twice the speed limit. Season Dow was pronounced dead at the scene while Toby died from his injuries after being airlifted to a hospital. Pope pleaded guilty to two counts of automobile homicide and was sentenced to up to 10 years in prison. She became eligible for parole in 2024 after serving nearly three years, but was denied after local station KUTV leaked details of some jailhouse phone calls between Pope and her father that occurred prior to the conclusion of her case in one phone call. Pope's father, Jeff, commented on how the Dows were supposedly breaking the law by being parked alongside the freeway while out of gas. During another conversation, Pope and her father discussed how relieved they felt that this was Pope's first offense, with Jeff remarking on how courts are always nice to first-time offenders. Pope tearfully apologized for the victim-blaming nature of the phone calls during her parole hearing, stating that she takes full responsibility for her actions despite the things that were said during those conversations. The parole board denied the young woman's bid for freedom, noting her multiple disciplinary write-ups and being kicked out of a substance abuse program as factors in their decision. Number 10. Christopher Martell a Las Vegas man named Christopher Martell is accused of fatally stabbing three homeless people and seriously injuring two others in a series of knife attacks near the University of Nevada in 2022. Authorities identify the murder victims as 43-year-old Jeffrey Philip Pridgen, 57-year-old Jody Thompson Devries, and 74-year-old Mary Miller. In early 2024, prosecutors announced their intention to seek the death penalty against Martell, who is facing three counts of murder and two counts of attempted murder. His trial was scheduled to begin in September, but it appears as though the case is delayed. Martell's alleged motive for the killings remains unclear. In the meantime, the surviving twin sister of Jodie Thompson Devries has devoted her efforts to changing the negative stigma against unhoused people, whose mistreatment is often overlooked by society. Judy Ferguson is accomplishing this goal by telling Jodie's story, which reveals the complicated and complex reasons behind how and why some people end up homeless. Number 9. Alexander Castro 24-year-old Alexandra Sabert was killed at the hands of a speeding driver in a wrong-way crash along a San Antonio highway in July of 2022. The man accused of being responsible for the young woman's death, Alexander Castro, crashed into her car at over 90 miles per hour as she sat stuck in traffic. As an officer approached the scene, his body cam captured footage of Castro exiting his totaled truck and blaming the victim for the wreck. He claimed that Sabert had been driving erratically and that she ended up beneath his truck before he even realized what had happened. But Castro's story didn't hold up, and he was charged with manslaughter. During his trial, the officer who arrested him admitted on the stand that he had gotten in trouble for failing to test the defendant for alcohol, even after Castro admitted to another officer that he had consumed a few beers before getting behind the wheel. Meanwhile, 
The defense argued that Castro wasn't responsible for the crash and that he therefore harbored no responsibility for Sabert's death. If convicted as charged, Castro could have faced up to 20 years in prison, but he was found guilty of the lesser charge of criminally negligent homicide. The judge sentenced him to 180 days in jail, followed by 10 years of probation, fined him $10,000, and suspended his driver's license for two years. Number 8. Haddon Clark Serial killer Haddon Clark was convicted of murdering two female victims, but the true number of people he killed may never be known. The 72-year-old is currently serving two 30-year sentences for the murders of a little girl named Michelle Lee Dorr in 1986 and 23-year-old Harvard graduate Laura Hoftelin in 1992. Prior to the murders, Clark was discharged from the US Navy after being diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. He spent most of his adult life as a vagrant who worked as a handyman and often lived out of his truck or in the woods. At the time of Dawes' murder, he had just been asked to leave his brother's house in Maryland after wearing out his welcome there. Dawes lived next door and happened to be outside in her family's backyard when Clark decided to take his anger over being kicked out of his brother's house out on her, despite the fact that she had nothing to do with the situation. At the time of Hoftelling's murder, Clark was living in the forest and working as a gardener for the young woman's mother, who never imagined that he was capable of such horrific violence. Hoftelin vanished from her family's Bethesda, Maryland home under mysterious circumstances, and Clark acted suspicious during questioning, but provided what seemed like a solid alibi for his whereabouts for the time frame encompassing her disappearance. As it turned out, Clark's alibi wasn't as airtight as it had initially seemed, and he was identified as the prime suspect in the case based on a bloody fingerprint found on Hoftelin's pillowcase. The year after the murder, he confessed and directed police to the shallow grave where he had buried the victim. He also eventually led law enforcement to the location of Dawes' body. Perhaps the most frustrating aspect of Clark's behavior is the taunting nature in which he took pleasure in his crimes. Just days after Hoftelling's death, he sent her family a deranged sympathy card, blaming his cross-dressing alter ego for the murder and begging Laura's mother to let him resume working for the family as their gardener. Over the following years, Clark confessed to dozens of murders that he claims he committed starting in his teens, including the yet unsolved killing of an unidentified Massachusetts woman nicknamed the Lady of the Dunes in 1974. None of these claims have been substantiated outside the murders of Dorr and Hoftelling, but Clark has also not been ruled out as the killer. Number 7. Pamela Hupp 42-year-old cancer patient Betsy Farrier was stabbed to death in 2011 after arriving at her St. Charles County, Missouri home from a chemotherapy appointment. Her husband, Russ, discovered her body later that evening upon arriving home from a poker game. Russ was convicted of Betsy's murder and sentenced to prison despite having an airtight alibi. Russ continued to maintain his innocence from behind bars and in 2016 he won a new trial. This time he was allowed to introduce evidence that was banned from the first trial and the jury learned that Betsy's supposed best friend, Pamela Hupp, had accompanied her to her chemotherapy appointment on the day of her death. Hupp was also the listed beneficiary of Betsy's $150,000 life insurance policy and had previously said things about Russ to investigators that had fueled their initial suspicion against him. This new information introduced enough reasonable doubt for the jury to acquit Russ. After being released from prison, he began working tirelessly to find evidence linking Hupp to Betsy's murder. In the meantime, Hupp insisted she was innocent and continued to blame Russ, claiming that he was trying to set her up. The already bizarre situation took another unusual turn in 2016 when a mentally disabled man named Louis Gumpenberger was shot five times in Hupp's home. Hupp claimed that Gumpenberger had robbed and attacked her, and she blamed the publicity she received during Russ Farrier's first trial for making her a target for the alleged violence. A local resident soon told law enforcement that Hupp had recently tried to lure her into a vehicle by posing as a TV show host and inviting her to participate in a hidden camera show. Detectives believe that Hupp ran the same scam on Gumpenberger, who suffered from brain damage from a previous incident in his life and may have been less suspecting than the typical victim. Phone records revealed that Pam was in his neighborhood shortly before the shooting, further pointing toward her guilt in that particular case. Hupp took a plea deal in order to avoid the death penalty and was sentenced to life without parole for Gumpenberger's murder. She was charged with Betsy's murder in 2021 and is currently awaiting trial. Number 6. Richard Bradley Jr. 
A 40-year-old Washington man named Richard Bradley Jr. stands accused of luring three people to their murders by asking them for help digging up gold in a wooded area in King County. He was first arrested in 2021 in connection with the death of 44-year-old Brandy Blake, who disappeared shortly after winning $20,000 at a casino. Blake's murdered remains were found at Game Farm Park in Auburn shortly after she vanished. In late 2023, prosecutors charged Bradley with three additional murders. He's accused of killing Emilio Maturin, who went missing in 2019 following the discovery of the victim's rib bones just 30 feet from where Blake's remains were found. Bradley is also charged in the shooting deaths of Michael Goman and Vance Lakey, whose bodies were found in a different local park. His alleged motives for the crimes are unclear. Witnesses reportedly admitted that they had heard about the accused serial killer's habit of luring people deep into the forest and murdering them once he had them alone and in an isolated area. They had also seen Bradley driving the victim's vehicles after the murders. Bradley has pleaded not guilty to all four killings and remains in custody as he awaits trial. Number 5. Sean Higgins 31-year-old pro ice hockey player Johnny Gaudreau and his brother, 29-year-old Matthew Gaudreau, were killed by a drunk driver while riding their bicycles in Oldman's Township, New Jersey, in late August of 2024. They were both hit from behind at around 8 o'clock in the evening as the motorist was attempting to pass other vehicles along a rural highway. The tragedy occurred the night before the Gaudreau's sister's planned wedding, and Johnny's wife would announce at his funeral just days later that she was pregnant with the couple's third child. Both brothers were pronounced dead at the accident scene. Responding state troopers reportedly noticed a strong odor of alcohol on the suspect, 43-year-old Sean Higgins, who admitted to drinking five or six beers before getting behind the wheel of his Jeep. According to law enforcement, Higgins confessed that he believed an SUV in front of him was trying to block him from passing, when in reality, the driver was moving in order to safely pass the Gaudreau brothers. He also supposedly admitted that his drinking had affected his judgment and caused him to be impatient. Higgins failed a field sobriety test and had a blood alcohol content of 0.087, which exceeds the legal limit of 0.08. He was charged with death by auto, reckless driving, possession of an open container, and consuming alcohol in a motor vehicle. According to prosecutors, Higgins, his wife, said he had been drinking regularly prior to the crash and that he had a history of driving like a nut. He remains held without bail, pending the outcome of the case. Number 4. Tyshawn Watson 50-year-old Zakira El Sharif was working at a Manhattan pizzeria in late August of 2024 when a customer came into the shop with their pit bull. He told the patron, later identified as 35-year-old Tyshawn Watson, that he couldn't have his dog inside the eatery. Watson allegedly reacted by pummeling him and sicking his dog on El Sharif, who has been hospitalized in a coma since then with a brain bleed and who may not survive his injuries. Police were called to the scene and Watson reportedly uttered an apology as he was led away from the scene in handcuffs. He is now facing an attempted murder charge and remains held at Rikers Island without bail as he awaits trial. In the aftermath of the brutal attack, El Sharif's co-workers told the New York Post that they do not accept Watson's apology, which has left the entire staff shaken and extremely worried about whether their valued colleague will survive. Number 3. Ayuri Trofim Late one night in August of 2024, 40-year-old Ayuri Trofim was arrested on suspicion of committing a deadly hit-and-run while driving under the influence. According to law enforcement, he slammed his Dodge Ram pickup truck into a motorcycle being driven by 55-year-old U.S. Marine Corps veteran Carson Heath near Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area, roughly 17 miles from downtown Las Vegas. Heath was pronounced dead at the scene despite emergency responders' best efforts to save his life. By then, Trofim had fled, leaving behind parts of his pickup truck that had come off during the crash. Investigators soon learned that a witness had followed Trofim after noticing that his truck was driving on one of its rims. He had veered off the road and gotten his vehicle stuck, roughly 10 miles from the hit-and-run scene. Trofim was charged with driving under the influence, reckless driving resulting in death, failure to stop at an accident involving death, failure to render aid at a vehicle accident, failure to decrease speed or use due care, and failure to drive on the right half of the roadway. The judge set bail at $10,000, imposed a requirement to wear an ankle monitoring bracelet, and banned the defendant from driving. Trofim secured his release by paying a bail bondsman $1,500, then failed to show for his scheduled arraignment hearing. His defense attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, and the prosecutor later revealed that Trofim had put his house up for sale and fled to his native country of Moldova. He reportedly has dual citizenship but had been living in Las Vegas for a number of years prior to going on the run, located in Eastern Europe. 
Moldova does not have an extradition treaty with the US and its constitution does not allow for the extradition of its nationals. A bench warrant was issued for his arrest following his missed court hearings, but as long as Trofim remains in Moldova, the best prosecutors can hope for is that the country's government handles the case according to its own standards of justice, if at all. In the meantime, the victim's family is outraged that he was even given an opportunity to flee the US in the first place. Today's topic was requested by Strange Stangle 64 and Emily Gilbayful. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Kenley Prendergast 25-year-old Kenley Prendergast was working as a counselor at an expensive private school in Spartanburg, South Carolina, when she began an inappropriate relationship with a student in January of 2018. During the day, the two video chatted and exchanged text messages, and they met up after school hours in Prendergast's private office, which was located inside her home. Prendergast had only been working at the school for five months when the illicit activities began. She was busted two months later and told investigators that the unlawful tryst had ended just days before her arrest. The school fired Prendergast immediately, and she was charged in accordance with the nature of her crimes. Coming up next, right after number one, a more blood-curdling cases of ordinary passengers losing their minds in the moment. Stick around for our previous release of 11 passengers who went crazy. You won't want to miss it. Number one, Chester Turner. Prolific serial killer Chester Dwayne Turner is on death row in California for murdering 14 women between 1987 and 1998. He mainly targeted vulnerable victims, including escorts and homeless women. Turner now stands accused of killing a 15th victim in Utah more than two decades ago. It's the first known murder the 57-year-old committed away from the Los Angeles area. In June of 2024, Salt Lake City prosecutors filed an aggravated murder charge against Turner for fatally strangling a courtesan in her early 20s named Etisha Camp in September of 1998. She had only been in the city for a few weeks when she met her untimely demise. Police were alerted to the discovery of her remains by a trio of teenagers who flagged down an officer after finding the woman's body with a scar wrapped around her neck at the bottom of a staircase behind a business. Camp was partially disrobed and she had been wearing the scarf as a decorative headpiece before a killer decided to use it as a murder weapon. She had just bought drugs from a nearby dealer when she crossed paths with the culprit and her body was found in an area that was a known rendezvous point for men who were seeking to satisfy certain urges. The new charge against Turner came after DNA found at the crime scene came back as a positive match to the serial killer. At the time of Camp's death, he was on parole in California for car theft and drug-related charges and had recently fled to Utah. His current case is ongoing. On July the 6th of 2021, near the end of the three-hour American Airlines flight 1774 from Dallas to Charlotte, a woman suffered a mental breakdown that led to her being gagged and duct taped to her seat. The unnamed passenger started screaming, I need to get off this plane and you need to let me off this plane. She then attempted to open the forward boarding door mid-flight before assaulting and biting a flight attendant who'd tried to help her. The woman also reportedly tried to hug and kiss another passenger and bit a different flyer multiple times before she was restrained. After the plane landed, the unruly flyer was shown in a TikTok video still taped to her seat while trying to scream at other passengers as they disembarked. She was taken off the aircraft by a stretcher and then transported to a hospital where she underwent a mental health evaluation prior to being placed on an American Airlines no-fly list. Updates from April of 2022 indicated that she faced a fine of $81,950, which was at the time the largest sanction ever handed out by the Federal Aviation Administration. Number 10. Tiffany Michelle Miles while on American Airlines Flight 3444 from Jacksonville, Florida to Washington, D.C., 36-year-old Tiffany Michelle Miles caused chaos because her alcoholic beverage wasn't served quickly enough. The incident occurred in late February of 2023 and fellow passenger Cara Rosario told ABC11 that Miles had become belligerent and yelling that she paid for first class and that she's not getting her drink that she's ordered. Miles then got up and tried to force her way into the cockpit. Air traffic control audio from the pilot indicated that 
The subject is currently on the loose in the cabin and that she was somewhat restrained by passengers and the flight crew. Miles recorded herself while she was actively being bound and said, I need you all to see this is what they're doing to me before complaining that no one had shown her a badge. The pilot diverted the aircraft to North Carolina for an emergency landing and asked that Miles be removed as soon as they touched the tarmac. The air traffic control operator responded that a long gun crew is going to be on the outside end of the aircraft. A photo taken aboard would show Miles being led out in handcuffs by several police officers. No passengers were injured during the commotion and all of them were subsequently booked on other flights to DC. Miles, who in the aftermath claimed that she'd been trying to enter the restroom and not storm the cockpit, initially faced a charge of airport obstruction, punishable by up to 20 years in prison. The charge was, however, ultimately dismissed by the Raleigh Durham Airport Authority Police Department. Number 9. Red Wings Incident An unnamed passenger on a flight operated by the Red Wings airline from Moscow to Antalya, Turkey, was shown on a viral video from the summer of 2017, having a drunken meltdown while covered in blood. The man, apparently in a state of disorientation, yelled and struck the seat in front of him as blood soaked his clothes from a cut to his face, the cause of which remained unknown. A woman sitting next to him was seemingly calm throughout the clip and continued looking out the aircraft's window. The passenger's outburst was believed to have lasted for about an hour and when the cabin crew failed to calm him down, they decided to restrain him. Other passengers helped and tied the intoxicated man's hands with a seatbelt. The police then took him into custody when the flight reached its destination. Number 8. Mohammed Shiraz Riaz In early November of 2023, father of three, Mohammed Shiraz Riaz, was jailed for 14 months at Minshull Street Crown Court in Manchester, England after admitting a series of disturbing incidents on two flights back to Britain. The first occurred on July the 15th of 2019 when Riaz was on a Ryanair Boeing 737 flying into Liverpool John Lennon Airport from Morocco. After a number of whiskey and coke drinks, Riaz started verbally abusing flight attendant Yelena Zorowska. He insulted and fat-shamed the woman when she refused to give him more alcohol. Riaz continued to humiliate Zorowska and had become so disruptive that the crew were forced to remove other passengers from his vicinity. It would later emerge that Riaz from Dewsbury, West Yorkshire had over 30 offences on his record from incidents related to him being intoxicated. After the plane touched down, passengers applauded when law enforcement arrived to remove Riaz. The man reportedly stormed down the aisle, presented his wrists to officers but maintained he hadn't done anything wrong. He continued behaving aggressively in the back of the police vehicle and allegedly bit an officer in the arm when they tried to restrain him. During his police interview, Riaz blamed his behavior on mixing alcohol with tramadol and two ibuprofen tablets. On January the 2nd of 2021, Riaz was returning from Istanbul to Manchester when he displayed similarly troublesome behavior. He danced and shadow boxed in the aisles, refused to wear his face mask and punched other passengers' seats. Most of those on board were families with children. The police arrested and handcuffed Riaz after the plane landed and before taking him through border control, whereupon he verbally abused a female border agent. The passenger from hell, as Riaz would come to be known in the media, squared off against another passenger at passport control and continued using foul language in the presence of young children. As he was being led to the police van, Riaz yelled out, No wonder it's so easy for us, and continued by saying, to abuse your white children and white women before stating that white men were weak. After failing to appear in court by claiming he had COVID-19, Riaz eventually admitted being drunk on an aircraft, assaulting an emergency worker and four charges of using threatening behavior. He wasn't, however, charged with any racially aggravated offenses. Number 7. Vadim Bondar while on an Aeroflot flight from Bangkok to Moscow, Russian anesthetist 
Vadim Vonda, aged 43, became foul-mouthed and violent and had to be restrained until the aircraft reached its destination, even though the airline banned alcohol in economy class on the route. Bondar overindulged in rum that he had in his possession. For several hours into the flight, he reportedly became loud and aggressive, threatening and humiliating flight attendants. He ignored attempts from crew and passengers to calm him down. Bondar at one point tried to open the emergency exit but was overpowered and stopped by two male passengers. They then assisted the crew in restraining the media dubbed Air Hooligan, who was tied up with seatbelts for the remainder of the flight, which was roughly four hours. Two bottles of alcohol were confiscated from him. After being bound, Bondar began sobbing and claiming that he couldn't breathe. He was later handed over to the police in Moscow. In the aftermath, he apologized for causing inconvenience, admitting that he drank alcohol while the plane was going through turbulence. He also expressed an intention of seeking legal counsel for his treatment on the flight. Bondar told a Russian TV channel that the belt was cutting into his larynx and jugular vein, making it hard for him to breathe. He also claimed that over $1,200 in cash was missing from his hand luggage and that he'd been injected with unknown medication. Number 6. Carlene Gearing Arizona woman Carlene Gearing, aged 21, was taken into custody by Las Vegas officers at McCarran International Airport in late September of 2021. The young woman had flown into a fit of rage and became belligerent towards Southwest Airlines employees after she wasn't allowed to board a flight. As reported by a supervisor, Gearing was denied rebooking a flight because of her behavior. The arrival of law enforcement did little to quell the woman's outburst as she began yelling, spitting, and kicking at officers. The police placed a spit mask on her and had to switch to flex cuffs as Gearing kept slipping out of her metal restraints. Officers detected a strong odor of alcohol emanating from her and she was medically cleared prior to being booked at Clark County Detention Center on charges of battery on a protected person, resisting a public officer, and violating airport rules and regulations. Number 5. Cameron Gibson a plane that was about to take off from Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport on May the 29th of 2023 was forced to return to the gate because of the violent outbursts of a passenger. During her inebriated antics, 25-year-old Kansas woman Kamarin Gibson was reported to have kicked another passenger in the head while putting her feet up on the seat in front of her. Deputies were called as the pilots taxied the aircraft to the gate. A TikTok video of Gibson's interaction with law enforcement subsequently went viral. The young woman told the officers, I literally need my phone, adding moments later, I'm literally so confused what's happening. After repeatedly asking her politely to get off the plane, the deputies yanked Gibson out of her seat and handcuffed her. She then started fighting them and the physical altercation continued onto the jet bridge. Gibson kicked two officers and bit a third in the thigh before she was restrained in a wheelchair. She was moved to the police office at the airport and charged with three counts of battery of a police officer, disturbing the peace while drunk, two counts of resisting an officer, and criminal mischief. Number 4. S7 Airlines Incident In July of 2015, a video was posted on YouTube of a passenger on S7 Airlines Flight 546 traveling from Hong Kong to Vladivostok, Russia, being physically restrained aboard the aircraft in the wake of him behaving inappropriately towards the cabin crew, the unnamed man was reportedly in an advanced state of intoxication. Witnesses stated that he'd repeatedly threatened and insulted the flight attendants, which triggered a violent response from others aboard the plane. The video would show him being attacked by at least four passengers who punched and kicked him to the floor. The man was bound with seatbelts and sticky tape prior to being left in the aisle for the remainder of the flight. He was subsequently arrested upon arriving in Russia. Number 3. Alexei Fursov While on a flight out of Bangkok, Thailand in the fall of 2023, dual Russian-Australian citizen Alexei Fursov, aged 35, was sitting next to a man who was only identified as Andre, 
During the meal service, Fursov suddenly grabbed a metal fork and started frantically stabbing the other man. He inflicted puncture wounds to Andre's back, shoulder, and chest before he was led to the back of the plane and hogtied by crew members and other passengers. It would later emerge that Fursov had also had a knife and scissors concealed within his reach, although it wasn't clear if he'd used them in the attack. Andre survived the stabbing and was given first aid aboard the plane. Passenger video showed the bound first off as he downplayed his actions and bizarrely motivated the attack by saying he thought Andre was going to bite him. Fursov added, I thought I'd just poke him and he'd disappear. Another passenger then sarcastically remarked, like a balloon bursting, and Fursov acquiesced. Before the plane reached Moscow, passengers took turns watching the restrained man as he tried to free himself. Another video showed Fursov, who had a dazed look on his face, being led out of the plane by Russian police. Number 2. Gudmunda Karl Arthurson in early January of 2013, civil engineer Gudmunda Karl Arthurson was on an Iceland air flight from his native country to the Caribbean, where he was supposed to be met by his fiance. 47-year-old Arthurson had visited family in Reykjavik for the winter holidays and was meant to catch a connecting flight out of JFK Airport in New York City. The man drank most of his duty-free alcohol, which consisted of Grand Marnier, whiskey, and schnapps while on board. Two hours into the flight, he became extremely rowdy. Some of his antics included groping two women who were sitting next to him and screaming that the plane was going to crash. He also randomly spat on passengers and started choking a male flyer without provocation. Arthurson was eventually duct taped to his seat by the flight crew and other passengers with his arms and even his mouth bound. A photo was taken of the restrained Arthurson and it earned attention online. In addition to being featured on the cover of the New York Post with the title, The Guy in 23C Wants Another Drink. The actions of the flight crew, while arguably necessary in the moment, were criticized given the fact that the man could have choked if he'd vomited and wouldn't have been able to react in case of an emergency. Upon arriving at JFK, Arthurson was rushed to a Queen's Hospital where he was treated for alcohol poisoning. Updates indicated that federal authorities had declined to prosecute the case. Number 1. Maxim G In the summer of 2016, a passenger on a domestic Aeroflot flight from Yuzno Sakhalinsk, a city on an island in the Russian Far East, to Moscow went on a drunken rampage and wouldn't calm down, even after he was spoken to by the captain. The feral flyer, only identified as Maxim G, refused to return to his seat in spite of repeated pleas from the flight crew. He eventually lost his temper and punched a flight attendant in the face. In the moments that followed, staff and passengers worked together to overpower Maxim. They tied his hands behind his back with duct tape from the galley and then strapped him into a flight attendant's seat far from the other passengers. A clip, which subsequently went viral, showed Maxim swearing at the members of the cabin crew and challenging them to a fist fight. In spite of being restrained, he was recorded saying, Come on, punch me, come on, you can do it, can't you? Punch me hard! Officers were waiting for the plane on the runway, whereupon they took Maxim into custody. Thanks for watching. If you had to choose, would you rather have a reputation for being greedy or for being a show-off?